Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my first attempt at reupholstering a chair. This chair was absolutely shot from uh, seven years of seven kids, two dogs, and one cat, but a couple others that have visited us over the years and didn't stick around for too long. But I started off with just uh, disassembling everything so I could see what I had to work with. If the, any of the cushions were salvageable, if any of the, uh, the, bat, the batting was salvageable or anything like that. Um, I found a lot of treasures inside. I thought I might find an old set of keys, but no luck. I did find two remote controls though, so that was awesome. I decided to keep everything really simple. I was just gonna put a uh, sheet, uh, sheet of quarter inch plywood on the back. And then I decided I would do the same for the bottom. I decided to put that plywood right over the springs and uh, attach my cushion and uh, fabric both to those new sheets of plywood. Here I am measuring out the plywood for the back of my chair. I just measured out exactly uh, what the back was. It had two little wings that had to be cut out on either side. Uh, very simple, and I just did it out of quarter inch plywood because this didn't really have to support any weight. Then just cut it out with a cordless uh, skill saw. Here I am just fitting that piece in. Nothing fancy, just a crude cut piece of plywood, but it works. Next, I just used my uh, 18 inch barred nailer and nailed that in. Again, nothing fancy. And I don't even know what you call these, the decorative covers that go on the front of the armrest. I just took off what was there and I cut out some new ones out of some cardboard. I was gonna cut them out of, you know, uh, maybe like an eighth inch plywood or something like that, but I didn't really see a reason not to just do these out of cardboard. I mean, it's not like the cardboard is gonna get beat up there or anything. Once it's attached, it's on and maybe gets kicked a couple of times, but it should be just fine. If it's not, Oh well. Right here I'm just cutting out the quarter inch plywood for the bottom cushion. I decided to keep going with the quarter inch plywood and uh, excuse the butt shot in front of the camera. I'll uh, pay more attention to that in the future. And what do you know? It fits. Might need a cushion though. Here I'm taking my measurements for all the different pieces of fabric that I'm gonna have in this project. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing them out onto a you know, crudely graphed out piece of paper uh, to plan out how I can best fit them all on a 54 inch wide sheet of fabric so that I can get the most pieces in and waste the least amount of fabric possible. Now I've got my foam. I found a piece of 24 by 36, which was exactly what I wanted for the bottom. And I did a custom cut piece of high density foam for the back. And oh my goodness, foam is so much more expensive than I thought. It's the biz biggest expense of the entire project. Here is the upholstery fabric I decided to go with. That actually is an upholstery faux leather that I'll be using on the bottom cushion and the back cushion. And then a wool blend flannel I decided to wrap around the arms and everything else. It, it might look a little funny, a little grampy, but I thought it was kind of cool. And I figured why not, it'll be fun. Now I'm drawing out the shape for the backrest on the high density foam. This took me a couple tries to get the cut just right on the bottom because I needed to angle the bottom into the, the uh, butt cushion, whatever that's technically called. 
So I cut out the, the little wings at the top first and then I shaved the bottom down until it fit just right. Here you can see I've got a good fit on the top, but the bottom is, it's, it's too tall. So I have to take a bit off that bottom yet to make everything fit in just right. Like I said, this is my first time trying to reupholster something, so I hadn't factored in that the bottom cushion will make the top cushion even shorter. So I had to do it again. Cut more off the bottom and kind of angle it so it slid back in behind there. And you can see my son's uh, dog came for a visit. He's a cute little guy who uh, likes to poop everywhere. Now I'm using some spray adhesive that I got from Home Depot for about $10. This is about half the price of the stuff actually at Joanne Fabric and it worked wonderfully. Got the uh, cushion in place, had to pull it up and readjust a few times. It's not perfectly forgiving, but it did allow me to pull it up and reposition a little bit without too much issue and then stick right back down. Once I got the foam on, I decided to cover it with a little bit of batting. I don't know the technical term for this stuff, but just to kind of round over my edges a little bit and add a little bit of extra cushion because that uh, high density foam isn't the softest. You don't really sink in, so adding a little bit there. If I were to do it again, I would add more padding to the top of both of my cushions whether that be more of this uh, batting or maybe maybe there's something that would be even better. If anyone knows of a good solution, feel free to leave a comment below and uh, that would be awesome. I'd really appreciate that. You only get one set of eyes, you don't get those back. So I got to use my new stapler and uh, tuck this batting around and that stapler is just so satisfying to use compared to the hand staplers I've had in the past. It's just glorious. At this point I came inside to the kitchen table. I didn't want to lay my fabric out on the garage floor. I did all my cutting, got all my pieces cut out and I made sure even after I measured them, I still tried to give about uh, extra two inches just for a little bit of give on all my different fabric. Now is the exciting part. I finally get to wrap my first piece of fabric. And I was a little nervous to make that first uh, staple, to put that first staple in, but it actually went really well. If I were to do it again, which I believe I'm going to, I have a few other pieces of furniture I want to do here in the future, I would definitely make sure to pull everything tighter. I thought I was pulling it tight, but wrinkles started forming a couple days later. Very minor. I'm being probably pickier than I should be, but I think if I would have pulled it tighter, I wouldn't have as many wrinkles now. So I definitely work a little bit harder to get it tighter the first time. Now we're jumping ahead. I didn't get a good shot of getting started on the arms, but the arms actually were pretty easy as well. Just making sure to fold that fabric in and get nice, neat folds as you wrapped around the arm. And I did my arms in two pieces and I folded each one under. I didn't even bother doing a decorative piece or anything to cover this seam because both pieces of fabric are folded. And I lined up the fabric, what I thought was pretty good where you can't really tell that there's a seam there. The only way you'd be able to tell is if you got down on your hands and knees and really examined it. Yeah, so I just folded it over and put my staples right, right through the middle here. And I'll, there'll be some close-ups later on. You really can't see any of them. You'd have to look, because it's kind of under that bulge from the arm. So you'd have to get down on your hands and knees and kind of look under there. and the staples disappear pretty well into the fabric. You just can't see them. The fabric that I used on the arms is actually a lot more forgiving than the uh, cushions, and there are no wrinkles in the arms. So they actually were pulled just fine. Uh, I just make sure to pull 
the butt cushion and the back cushion a lot tighter next time. Where the arms, they were just fine with how tight I pulled them. Now I'm just wrapping the next armrest and fitting it on. I tucked the back fabric in between the two cushions, in between the armrest and the back cushion, which worked really well. And then I was able to pull it through from the other end and get a few staples inside the chair to hold that tight. And then just wrapping around the front again, just like on the other arm. Here's a shot from the back side of the couch. You can see right next to my hand there where I was able to pull that fabric through and staple it on the inside of the couch. And then just a shot down here, which don't know why. You can't even really see the couch. My apologies. Now I'm adding the fabric onto the front that'll be just below the butt cushion and in between the two arms. There's a seam right where my hands are there, but again, no one's gonna find this in this plaid pattern. It just disappears right into the fabric once everything's tight. To get this fabric nice and tight, I did have to staple a few on one end, walk around to the other side, staple those, and go back and forth a few times just to make sure it stayed nice and tight. Here I've got the front armrest covers, and I started just by spraying them with some uh, spray adhesive again, just to get the fabric to hold down tight and wrap it around the back. And I figured I was gonna nail these in with some decorative nails. Uh, these pieces are used to cover the, all the, where the armrests come around, wrap around and fold over. I did find out, however, that my decorative nails were not long enough. So I had to order some new ones and I don't have them in yet. So I actually just threw a couple staples in these just so they hold in for now. And I was able to bring it in the house and can use it in the meantime, even though the decorative nails are not yet in. It wasn't stapled there yet, by the way. It's just sitting. Now I'm getting ready to do the bottom cushion. I cut out my sheet of quarter inch plywood earlier and now I'm just spraying on some adhesive on there. I'm not reusing the old cushion because there's springs inside the old cushion and they ripped through the foam and poked everybody in the butt. So we didn't want to get poked in the butt anymore. So we're not using that anymore. Now I'm wrapping this cushion with some fiber just to round out the edges again. I did place it on wrong and had to pull up all my staples, as you can see right there, and just had to move it over and restaple it. No harm, no foul. just gonna go ahead and put on the final piece of fabric onto the front of the couch. That was actually really hard to get set. I wish I had cut a bigger piece because this was really tedious. I did not have much to spare. So I would give myself an extra two to four inches on every end of this just to make it easier in the future. By the way, this project I started it at about two or three in the afternoon on day one and wrapped up at about seven and that included a trip to, I probably started at one and it included a trip to Home Depot and two to Joanne Fabrics and then it took about two hours on day two to wrap it up. So all together it took about six to seven hours with a couple hours of trips in there that could be more efficient in the future. Thankfully, it was a good fit when I was done. 
You can see some of the wrinkles which I was able to pull out and smooth out, but they kind of came back at day two. So like I said, I wished I had pulled that a little bit tighter. So here you can see how the couch is starting to come together. And it's just for uh, visual sake, I'm gonna hold the, excuse my poor camera angles again. Jeez, Ryan. <laughs> and there it is. That's how it looks. And here's the final walk around. It turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. I love kind of the, the rustic look. Feels like a cabin couch at the end of the day. It's pretty warm. It's pretty comfortable. The foam isn't, you don't sink in it much. I didn't love the wrinkles, but at the same time for my first go around, I was really happy. I spent about $350 and it could be done cheaper if I ordered the foam online rather than Joanne fabric. That was very expensive. And I did have to buy the stapler and a fancy scissors and a few things. So I think it could be done for 250. And if you ordered the foam online and the fabric online, you could probably get it under $200. So I think a very efficient spend on a couch like this could probably be at about 150 to reupholster it. And um, I'm excited to try it again. I think I can do even better the next time. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something from me going through it, my mistakes, and uh, hopefully you're not scared to try this. It was, it was pretty easy and very rewarding and satisfying. I didn't have to throw a chair into the dump. I didn't have to throw it away. And hopefully we get a bunch of years out of it. Oh, come on, Ryan. Don't stand in front of the camera like that. Learn how to take a simple video. There it is. There's the chair. Without my butt. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like the video, subscribe. Go ahead and turn on those little notifications as well. I really appreciate it whenever anyone subscribes or gives me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.